So, for some crazy reason the other day, I decided to delete OBS Studio. All of the plugins that were associated with it literally have a completely clean start on my stream. So I then reinstalled OBS Studio, all of the plugins again, and I decided to just completely start from scratch. I don't know why I did that. I was just having a bit of a crazy moment. It was two o'clock in the morning and I was wide awake, but I'm pretty happy with the outcome. So I've basically spent the last like four or five days completely overhauling my stream. I'm doing a lot of the things that I've been sort of meaning to do for quite a while. There's a list of different things I wanted to achieve by overhauling my stream. One of the things in particular was to learn new things. I want to learn some new techniques. Now, if you're watching this video, you're watching it because I've said in the title that it's going to make the most complicated audio spectralizer pop up that says now playing on Spotify with some album art and stuff like that. Now, you're either going to sit in one of two camps here right now. You're either going to want to just sit and learn how to do it very quickly because you just want to add it to your stream. And if that's the case, fine, you will take a lot from this video. However, you might be in camp two, and that's the camp where you actually want to learn about some new techniques within OBS Studio. And that's where I was at. I really wanted to learn some new techniques in OBS Studio, pull them all together into one nice, clean thing. First up, a quick word from my sponsors. Owned.pro was a plugin specifically for OBS Studio. You literally install this, and from there, you can install one-click overlays from Owned.pro. You can install alerts from Owned Pro. It's a really, really good tool. I've tried this out myself. I absolutely love it myself, and I'm sure you'll like it too and the best part is if you use code machine at checkout when you take out a pro subscription with owned pro you'll get 50 percent off the subscription cost you'll also be supporting the channel so that's a thanks from me and hopefully you enjoy it check out owned.pro and let me know how you get on So in this video, I'm going to be covering six different techniques within OBS Studio that I've used to create a now playing widget. Now, I will caveat this video by saying there are easier ways to achieve some of the things, but I've decided to do some of them in a more complicated way, specifically to challenge myself to do it in a more complicated way to learn the techniques. For example, I've got something that pops out to the side and says now playing. I could have just hard coded that as an embedded piece of media, but instead of it being a media file that does that it's just a text file using obs text gdi and it then uses move transition to pop it out hold it for a certain amount of time and then bring it back in so i've used obs filters to achieve that because i wanted to learn all about the different filters and hopefully that's one of the reasons why you're tuning into this i was fueled on coffee but i learnt and i got there with it and hopefully i'll be able to distill all of that information so what were my objectives when i wanted to do this now playing widget that pops up and tells you on your obs stream what the next song is. Well, I wanted it to look nice and I wanted it to look clean. I wanted it to not be easy to install because I wanted to learn some new techniques. I wanted the content to be dynamic. In other words, it's not just one hard-coded file. It's using basically content and data that changes over time and then uses triggers. I wanted it to be fully automated. I wanted it to be quite unique. I've not seen anyone else do this as well as I've done it or at least not implement as many techniques as I'm using. I also then wanted to use an array of different techniques so that it was a smooth and as clean as possible and hopefully you'll agree that it looks really nice and clean but some of the techniques I'll show here you can completely customize yourself and you'll be able to do some different things to what I've done so let's run through the different techniques that I've actually used in this video and if you're interested in any of these techniques then just check out the timestamps below if you only want one or two of those techniques great if you want to see the whole thing then just watch it end to end first of all I've used a mask filter on the scene and also on sources I've used four elements that move as part of this so the first element that I've used is the now playing static text, which I've said uses the OBS move transition plugin, and it just pulls it out. It holds it there for a certain amount of time, and then it drops it back in behind the widget. I've used two other techniques here, which is a dynamic song titles change and some album changes, which then uses a scroll filter to essentially make the wording move across the screen or the widget, as it were. I've used Snip app for Spotify to read that text file and change the now playing. It links to your Spotify, and it just shows the album 
album artwork and what's playing now. I used the same move transition plugin to move the whole widget itself into the screen and then move it back down off the screen. Requires some scene nesting, which we'll go into a little bit as well. I've used this audio spectralizer plugin for OBS Studio, which I've used before and I've done some quite extensive videos about this. I'll link the video above here. And then the other elements I wanted to include are an album artwork, of course, and then a trigger to only happen when there's a song change. And this is something that I sort of struggled with a little bit, but I figured it out in the end and it's a really, really neat solution. So the widget will only appear whenever there's a song change, which I just think is a really, really nice touch. So let's get into the tutorial. What I just want to say is that I use heavily scene nesting in this video. I've also got a video all about scene nesting. I actually use, I think, Streamlabs as the example because scene nesting is actually a lot more useful in Streamlabs because there's certain things you can't do. I'm obviously using now scene nesting within OBS Studio. This would not be possible without scene nesting. Scene nesting just allows you to add certain characteristics to certain sources without affecting like the original raw version of it. And I won't go into a lot of detail about it because I have done a full video all about scene nesting. I really recommend watching that video. Suffice to say, it's allowed me to actually do what I need to do. And one of the problems I ran into here was that the move transition plugin only works on scenes. It doesn't work on a source, which seems like not too much of a problem. But because the trigger to make the widget appear, so the thing that pulls out the widget and shows it on screen and then allows it to temporarily disappear, they only work on sources. So I couldn't lump everything into a scene or just one source. I've had to like blend the two to get around some limitations of the actual plugins and scripts that I'm going to show you in this tutorial. Now, the thing also to note about this tutorial is I'm not going to build it now for you. I'm going to show you what I already have built. And there's a reason for that. I already know that this video is going to be a long-ish video. If I'm actually doing the full build as well as explaining it, the video would be twice or three times as long. So believe it or not, I'm actually trying to minimize the amount of time that this video is by showing you what I've done. Now, first, just quickly to go through the actual plugins that we are going to need to enable everything within this video. We're going to need Move Transition, which we use for both making the widget appear and then the now playing text to pop out again. So that's two different versions. Then I've used Snip, which is not an OBS Studio plugin. It's a small applet that sits on your desktop and it basically just places Spotify artwork into a file and the now playing song title into a file. I've done a completely separate video all about Snip. So I'm not going to show you how you install Snip. Just follow the video. I'll place it on the card and in the description below. I've used the Spectralizer plugin, which is essentially the thing that will show the audio visualizer like this. Next up, I've used this Lua script, which is called Text Trigger by Squeak502. This just allows sources to appear based on a trigger and then temporarily appear to disappear again. And where this is useful is every time the album artwork or the text file changes when Snip has placed something into it, this triggers the source to appear for a certain amount of time and then disappear. And I'll show you a little bit more detail how we configure that. So what I've done here to start with, I've created a scene and I've called it Now Playing Text. This is literally just a text file like this. There's not much else we need to do to this. It's just a source in there. And I'll show you what filters I've added to enable that movement to happen and to go back in again. So the first technique we're actually going to look at here is how to use move source as a filter to automatically make something appear and then disappear. And we use this twice. We're going to first put it on the now playing to allow the text to move out from behind the artwork. Now, as I've said earlier, this filter, once you've installed move transition plugin for OBS Studio, it doesn't work on the source itself. Instead, it works on the scene, which is why when you click on the scene and go on filters, you'll see we've now got these two effect filters. And this was definitely one of the limitations that I've had and one of the reasons why we've had to use scene nesting to achieve this look. So all I've done is, is I've added a move source and the settings that I've used for this move source filter here. First of all, I've selected the text source. So it only uses this text source, which should be quite straightforward because you'll have already added this text source in here. So it's the text source that we're trying to move. I've set a delay of this being nearly four seconds. And that just means that instead of now playing appearing when the widget's off screen or even appearing as it's coming onto screen, it just delays it so that the widget can appear. There's a little bit of a delay and then the now playing comes out. So that's just a personal preference. So the actual move will not happen until 3.8 seconds. Now I've got a custom duration of 1.2 seconds here. That just means the actual duration of the text coming out. 
and it just means there's a nice little slide out there but you can speed up or slow that down as much or as little as you like you can do all the easing and stuff like that now what we have to do at this point whatever location you want it to start in we need to get that position now sometimes when you click get transform here it will place the x and y coordinates here great but this can be a little bit buggy so if you find that it's not getting the different coordinates that you've placed this source in what you just need to do is right click if you just go on transform and edit transform you can see the positions of it so for example if i wanted the transition to start from there and go to there i just have to right click transform edit transform and see what the x and y coordinates are again it's all personal preference to how you choose to implement this this is just how i've implemented it so back into the now playing scene filters now there's an end delay so it basically shows at the end of that that move transition i want a delay of nearly seven seconds and this is the point where it's done the first movement and it's just sticking around before moving on to the next movement and you can then link one movement to the other and this is how you create loops and automatic things like that we've got the transform position so we want it to move to whatever position now i'm just gonna have the start trigger here as when the source is activated but you may want a different start trigger here for example you might want it to be i don't know when the filter becomes actively shown in the final mix i did some trial and error here and i found that when the source itself is activated then the source becomes more actively shown in the final mix now why is this important bear in mind here this source is only going to be activated when the lua script triggers it to appear temporarily and disappear so the start trigger for that now plane to pop out will be when the source itself appears and the source will be triggered only when there's a change in song so this is the first real bit of like smart logic that we're applying to this widget and it means that this movement will only apply we'll see a little we'll see a little delay here at start and then it should move then we get that it holds there for six or seven seconds and then it'll trigger onto, and I'll just show you this here, it triggers onto the next move, which is this second easing out trigger. So you can then choose after it's done its movement and its delays, what the next move is. So I'm just selecting another filter, but before you can select this other filter, we actually have to create this other filter. And the way you do that is you right click and duplicate it. You would rename it easing out. And once you've renamed it easing out, you then go through the same process. But this time what I've done is there's no start delay. So I want it to happen straight away because we've actually built in the delay into this section. It's the same custom duration, so it'll just ease out at the same pace. And this time the X and Y my coordinates are further to the left hand side you can see here that was 600 earlier now i've used 419 i've set the start trigger to be exactly the same so it's kept all the settings from the first one the only thing i've done is the next move to do no next move and this just means that when the now playing widget disappears and goes back in it's then waiting for this first source to trigger again and that will only trigger when the source is activated which will be when the lua script which we'll go into in a second will trigger that to appear the source it'll all make sense just stick with me okay so the end product of this is that we've got a scene with just some basic text in that moves out like this and you can fiddle around with the exact point of where you want to put that at a later stage so don't worry too much about that so if we now click on the filters the end effect is that we've got this effect that will the source will appear there'll be a little bit of a delay it'll then pop out imagine there's some artwork here it'll hold for 6.8 seconds and then it will drag itself back in at the end of that. And then it triggers this move source here to do the move outwards. Next up, we're going to create another scene and we're going to call it now playing assets. This is the scene that will contain all of the assets that will essentially become like the final widget. But it means we've got an individual scene with the assets in rather than having to have all of those individual things on every single scene that we want to use this widget on. It does make sense to do it that way because it now means we can just add a scene to every single scene rather than adding all the individual assets. It just makes things a lot more simpler. So first of all, we're going to add the now playing text scene that we've just created and that's this here that then pops out and comes back in. So to do that, you click the plus icon and you click on scene. And we just want to select the scene that's called now playing text. So it's the scene that we've just created. Now the image and the artwork. So this is the snip album artwork that will appear, but it only appears when a song is playing. So if I now press play on a song here, we'll see the image appear and the same goes for the text file. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how to set up snip in OBS studio because I've literally done a full dedicated video on how to do that but essentially what we're doing here is adding an image so you go plus icon and image and this is once you've installed snip and the image will read from file now what will happen is because this snip artwork here is a dedicated like generic name the snip application itself 
takes the Spotify artwork and places it in that file. And then when there's a new song, there's another new artwork that places it in that file again, but it's got the same name. So it like overrides the existing file, if that makes sense. So you want to make sure that the image file is the snip album artwork. With the text file here, we click the plus icon. We're adding a text GDI. And when we open this up, we see we're reading from file. And this instead is reading from the snip.txt. You just need to locate where that file is. Now, the thing to bear in mind here is that snip can be a little bit buggy. If you find that the text isn't being placed into that text file or the album art isn't being placed, first of all, refer to the video that I've already done about this. But second of all, you can try right clicking on snip, closing it down, reopening Spotify, and then reopening snip again, the application. If you don't have snip open, then this will not work. You have to have snip running. Otherwise, it simply will not place those images for the album art and it won't take place the album name in the text file as well or the song name in the text file so you can customize all these texts here to make the text look and feel exactly how you want it to but now when i play a song you'll see that the album artwork will appear and the text will appear which means that the whole thing will actually appear so if i just press play on spotify we see the album artwork there and we see the text there as well so that's what it looks like for now, but there's a load of other stuff that we've got to do to make that work. I'm going to add the audio spectralizer there. Now the spectralizer, again, I've done a full video on how to install this and customize it. I've just chosen to include an audio spectralizer here that makes it look really, really cool. But you can place this anywhere on your stream if you want. I've chosen to include it in this widget because I think it makes the widget a little bit more unique. And the effect is exactly like this. You see this nice kind of audio visualizer. It looks a little bit better when it's small as a widget in the corner, as opposed to being large sized here where it looks a little bit more grainy and a little bit more janky. Now there are some other effects that I've used here. On the image album artwork, if we right click and go on filters, I've added a image mask and blend. So there's actually a filter here, which is an image mask. And all this does is just make it look a little bit more rustic. Guess what? I've also done another video all about image masks, mainly for webcams. But in this case, I'm putting the mask over the album artwork. By default, the snip artwork is perfectly square which is cool and it looks fine and you might be happy with that. But I wanted it to look a little bit more rustic just to give it that kind of customized effect. I've got this kind of rustic mask here that's perfectly square and over the black areas that will mask out the image of the album artwork and the white areas will let the album artwork come through. So the effect that you get of this, of adding that mask to the album artwork, we just press play again. We see this kind of rustic feel on the outside. And I just think that's really, really cool looking. I will link below a download file so you can get that exact same image mask if you want, but you can also make your own masks and design them exactly how you want to, or perhaps search Google. As long as the image isn't copyrighted, you should be fine to use that. Now, the final thing you'll do here, you'll notice that this spectralizer here is in front of the album artwork, but it's also sort of behind the rustic mask. Now, think about what I've done here for a second. The mask is on this album artwork. So in theory, this audio spectralizer shouldn't be able to come through here. Actually, it should just be hard coded in front of it. So what I've done to get around this, because I wanted that audio spectralizer to sort of appear behind the mask, but in front of the artwork, even though the mask is on the artwork, if that makes sense, I've actually added a a filter to the spectralizer here we click on filters and i've added another image mask and blend and i'll show you what this one looks like all i've done here is literally snip out the bottom of that same mask and add a version of it i made sure i got the sizing here perfectly to the size of the audio spectralizer by copying that picture of the audio spectralizer so literally taking the dimensions of it like this opened it up in photoshop along with the full album artwork and i literally just trimmed it to size so we've now got a mask over the spectralizer itself it's sort of like a little bit of a hack. It's essentially using the same mask, but only like the bottom half of it, if that makes sense. And again, the effect is that what we've got is the spectralizers in front of the artwork, but it looks like it's behind the mask, but actually it's just an additional mask. It's only that lower half of the mask that I've added to the spectralizer. So we've now got our now playing widget that will pop out. We've got our image for the artwork itself. We've got the spectralizer that appears in front of it and gives it a nice kind of visual effect. So what I've also done is a scroll effect on the name of the song so i right click the name of the song and filters and this is a default filter called scroll so you can just add the filter called scroll here and the settings i've done here is a horizontal speed i've just triggered this up to 95 you can make that as fast or as slow as you like 
I've also chosen to limit the width of that text file as well and that just means that it actually limits it to here and it means that it's not going to kind of if you get like a longer name it won't overextend. I'll show you what this looks like if I actually limit the width to a little bit higher. For example, if I limited it to 750, we'd have this effect, and I don't particularly want that to be the case. Now, you can choose to crop the source, but the cropping the source does cause some issues. So rather than cropping that text file, if we just unbolt this, if I was to crop this by holding Alt and bringing it across here, we can do it that way. But then when you get a new text file, it'll be extended further and that crop will persist and it'll still basically cause the same kind of issue. So we've got all of our assets in here in one scene called now playing assets. We can now place that one widget on any scene that we want and that should now work. But first of all, we want to make sure that we've got the Lua script installed to make sure it only pops up when there's a new album artwork. Now to do do this I've gone to the Lua script called text trigger by squeak 502 and this just allows us to trigger sources to appear but only at certain points so once you've installed that Lua script and I've done a video on how you can install Lua script so hopefully you can check that out and get that successfully installed within tools and scripts we'll have this text Lua script here for that Lua script. Now we just need to customize this. So I'm first going to browse. Now we can choose it to look at the text file so that when a new song name appears in the text file, it will make these sources appear. Or you can check a different file, for example, the album artwork. I've chosen to go with the text file because it's just a little bit more reliable because it's only text rather than artwork. It probably doesn't make a difference, but yeah, I've basically browsed to the snip file that's installed and it will look at this snip text file here, which will contain the album text now don't worry if this is empty this will only populate when you are playing a song and when you are running the snip application so if this is empty to start with don't worry too much at all so it will look at that text file and now we can check the trigger to check at certain intervals i've said here every two seconds i want this script to check that file to see if there's been any change at all if there's no change the script will do nothing it won't show the source if there's been a change it will then show the source and we can configure exactly how that works first of all we can select the actual source that we want to appear or number of sources that we want to appear so for me i only want the source for the spectralizer to appear and i want the text for now playing to appear as well now bear in mind you can only select sources here you can't select the whole thing now what i wanted to do was have that whole scene that we've created with all of the assets to appear on its own but because it's a scene and we need it to be a scene because we then need to add a move transition to allow it to appear i wasn't able to do that but don't worry it'll all make sense in due course how we've done that i've checked here to affect all scenes this just means that wherever those sources appear on other scenes it will affect every single scene you apply it to now, i also have said here i want the source to appear for a total of 15 seconds and i want to make sure that i'm triggering on any change to that file that we've defined now 15 seconds is not a insignificant number it's almost the exact amount of time that we've set for those move transition effects that we triggered earlier for the now playing text to pop out and pop back in again but you can define this exactly as you are and you'll probably need a little bit of trial and error or you can just copy the exact timings that I've done in this video. So I'm going to click close on that. That just now means that those two, the spectralizer and this text here will appear only when there is a song change. So next up, I'm creating a final scene which just contains a source mirror called spectralizer. I forgot to mention actually, we also use source mirror here, which involves the stream FX plugin here. Again, I'll link it in the description below. Stream FX plugin as it's got loads of different filters that you can add to OBS Studio. We're specifically using the source mirror here, which kind of coexists with the scene nesting that we've been doing as well. Once you've installed the StreamFX plugin, you'll then have a new filter called source mirror. So we're going to select the source mirror on a brand new scene called Spectralizer Final. And this is where we want to have all of the final assets ready to be added to all of our scenes. And I'm simply going to add the source mirror and I'm going to select the source mirror to be that Spectralizer here. So it's the now playing asset scene that we've just created that contains all the assets. So then essentially here we've got this spectralizer final scene that's got everything, but now it exists as a source within the scene instead of a scene of its own, if that makes sense. Now you'll notice here, and this is the final part of the actual animation, and this is the reason why we're adding this extra step. This is the bit where we get all the assets to appear 
and then disappear again. So rather than just any one little bit of the asset, it's the total combined assets that we've just created in that other scene. So these are all going to appear at once and then all disappear. And it uses the move source that we added earlier for the now playing text. This time we're doing it for everything rather than just the now playing text. Well, as I mentioned earlier, one of the limitations to move transition is that it only applies to scenes. So I can't apply it here, which is why I've added it, added it as a source within there on its own. And then we've got a final essentially spectralizer source here that we can move in its entirety. Now, don't worry if you can't see anything here at all. Remember, this is only appearing when there's a song playing and also when there's a script that said that there's been a change in the file. Now, if you want, you can disable that script and then you can see the source available at all times. For testing purposes, you may just want to do that Lua script bit at the very back end of the process. So now all we're trying to do is to get all of these items to move up to the very corner and then back down again. And that just gives us an effect that means that we can cut this off half off the screen when we add this to our final scenes and it means it can essentially just appear on screen and then disappear back off screen so just to show you exactly what this looks like i'm going to enable the source itself and i'm going to press play so that all the files exist and essentially it brings it all up like that the now plane should pop out now and then it will drop it all back down again after 15 seconds. It looks a little bit like that, but I think I've not quite got the timings right because I've done it manually there. But we're gonna automate that process. And again, move source allows us to do that. So now we just go through the exact same process that we went through for this now playing text here. But instead of it doing it on just the text file, we're doing it on everything with inside this scene. So we're gonna right click this and we're gonna go on filters on the spectralizer final. And we're gonna add two move sources again. One filter to ease up the whole widget and then another filter to ease it all back down again. So we're calling it ease in and ease out. And I'll just run through some of these settings here. So you want to click plus and it is a move source filter that we're adding and we're adding it onto the spectralizer final scene that we're going to be adding to all of the scenes that we want that widget to appear. We're going to choose the spectralizer source here, which is the only source that we've got available because we've created a source mirror for that. I want the start delay to be three seconds. The reason why I've chosen three seconds is because we've chosen two seconds for the read file to look at whenever there's been a change on that file. So that just gives you enough time for it to look at that file, see if there's been any changes to the album artwork or the name of the next song. And it gives another second of buffer time so that that will then actually appear. And before it appears, it's then sat there ready to then move upwards. All we're really trying to do here is stop it from kind of moving up and, and as it's on its way up, it then appears. We don't want the album artwork to be appearing kind of midway through. We want it to already be appearing before it makes that transition upwards. We want the period of the actual transition itself to be 1.2 seconds. So that movement will last 1.2 seconds. And then we want it to hold for eight seconds. So that's a little bit more than the 6.8 seconds that we had the now playing. Now, why is that important? It means that the now playing will come out, hold for 6.8 seconds and go back in. And then the whole thing will move down. So this is just a little bit more than the 6. Point eight seconds, which is just a nice clean look, but you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. Now, again, with this first filter, we just need to get the transition. So we need to get the location of it. So the ease in, we want it to be located in this top hand corner, which is why the transition X and Y axis is zero, zero. And just to demonstrate what that looks like, it should be nested nicely in the corner like that. And the axis here, as you can see, is zero, zero X and Y. We need to make sure that the transform is also ticked as well because it is a movement that we're transforming and that's what the actual filter is. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit more. We can leave most of these settings the same. I'm having the start trigger here to be when the source is actually active, but bear in mind when it's activated, it's going to be off screen anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much, but you probably want to set this to source activate when the source becomes active in the final mix. And then the next move, we want it to be this second filter that we're going to create as well, which means it will move upwards, it'll hold, and then it'll do the second filter, which will move it back down again. And again, that's like a loop. Then what we want to do again, like what we did earlier to the text, we want to right click and duplicate this. We want to rename it to ease out. And here we want no delay. We want it to be the same duration. So it's a nice smooth transition. This time we've got the Y axis will change to be 540, which means it's just lower down the screen. It's all the way down here, as we can see. Now, again, you can just move the scene and click get transform and it will just place all of the coordinates in there. But sometimes it is a little bit sticky. And if it is that, you want to right click the source, click on transform, edit transform, and just take this Y axis position here and paste it into the Y number here. So for this second source, I'm actually having the 
start trigger to be none. And the reason is because I want it to start when there is a next move to start this move. And all this is, is that next move that we had on the first filter, this second filter will only start when that is triggered. And then the next move will be zero on this second filter. So what happens was, is this will do its process with these timings and then it will trigger this move source easing out. And because we've set this setting here, the start trigger to be the next move or start this move here, it will only trigger the second movement when this first movement is done. Hopefully that all makes sense. We just click OK on that. And essentially what we're left with is on this scene, if we right click that again in filters and we just test this by clicking the eyeball, that first one should ease it up and ease it back down again. If I just press play on the song, you'll actually see what that kind of looks like. The problem is now that there'll be a delay on the text, but don't worry about that. It'll all, all the timings will work out pretty well. So just to test this and demonstrate what this looks like, I'm going to click play on Spotify so that album artwork will appear. And I'm also then going to quickly click the eyeball on this source so that the timings are sort of roughly about right. And you can test this and just play some trial and error here. So these have appeared because there's now data in that file. There's been a delay which allows it to then push up. The now plane pulls out. That should then go back in and then the whole thing will drop back down again. That's what you're left with. Now all that's left to do is to actually go onto the scenes where you want the widget to appear and place it in the right area on the scene. Now for me, I want this to start off screen in the bottom left hand corner and then appear whenever there's album artwork. So in other words, when there's a new song that starts and then it will disappear in line with the timings that we've set on the scripts and everything else. So to do this, I'm gonna click the plus icon here. I want to add a new scene and the scene I'm gonna select is the spectralizer final scene that we've just created with all of those movements in itself. And here is the final result once you've positioned that in the right place. I'll just show you what I've done here. I've placed it in the bottom corner. So half of it is above and half of it is below. It just means that only when that movement happens will this appear on scene and then it disappears off the scene once that movement is finished. And I'll show you what that looks like. We've got the nice spectralizer effect here as well. Lovely jubbly. If you're still here watching this now, then congratulations. I know this is a much longer video, but hopefully you've learned a hell of a lot of things throughout the process of this video. It's probably a little bit different to my normal content. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button on the video so that this video gets some YouTube love. Have a wonderful day and take care.